2010, we redistrict following the census. You win state legislation, you get to draw the new maps that control all the elections over the next decade. It's the biggest heist in modern American political history. I'm with an organization called Voters Not Politicians. We're working with the anti-gerrymandering drive. If we don't come and say that enough is enough, then nothing's going to change. Hey, everybody. I'm Katie Fahey. I was just in the clip that you saw from Slay the Dragon uh, because in 2016, I made a Facebook post saying, hey, I want to end gerrymandering in Michigan. If you want to help, let me know. Smiley face. Uh, in Michigan, we had been dealing with a lot of things that didn't really seem to be going the way that the voters wanted, especially environmentally related. Um, not sure if everybody's heard of the Flint water crisis, but basically an entire city in our state ended up getting poisoned because of government control being taken away on the local end uh, and ignored and a financial decision being made um, quickly uh, that then ended up unfortunately devastating an entire city. Uh, living in the state, when that was going on, I felt kind of helpless to do anything. I, I knew that there needed to be something done more than just getting people clean water, although that was very important. I wanted to think about how can we really fix the long-term uh, reasons and the systemic reasons that something like the Flint water crisis was able to happen. Um, and I really saw that one of those big things was gerrymandering. And gerrymandering, for anybody who doesn't know, is when our lines, the lines and borders that determine who our representatives are get changed. So right now, who you vote for at the state level and at the federal level um, is different than maybe other people in your state. You usually have a certain number of representatives uh, and there's boundaries, geographic boundaries that determine who your representative is. Well, when politicians decide to draw those lines, not based on how do you get good representation, but instead they draw those lines based on how can I make sure that only the voters I like are voting for me and the voters I don't like, how do I make sure that their votes don't count as much? Or maybe they're trying to make sure that, you know, somebody else in their party is getting more votes than they should. That's called gerrymandering. Basically, the manipulation of these lines that determine who we vote for to benefit one political party or an individual politician. Well, gerrymandering is one of the reasons why our politicians don't often feel accountable to us. Why, even if a lot more of us vote to send a message to say, hey, we want change, nothing really changes. Gerrymandering is one of those reasons because basically, those lines get drawn so that they don't have to listen to everybody or they know that they have a majority of people who will support their political party over another one no matter what so why listen to the other people in our state which is really unfortunate because we're supposed to have a representative democracy where our elected officials actually represent us and our communities and the things that we care about I think that's especially to take, uh, important to take note of today on the anniversary of Earth Day because a lot of environmental issues right now are being ignored because not because voters don't care or communities don't want them prioritized, but because politicians are elected and essentially insulated from having to do what their constituents want or even what popular opinions are. Uh, my background was actually in environmental sustainability uh, and I was really frustrated with our government <laughs> because I saw that paying attention and wanting to see change happen was an extremely popular idea that we continue to not move on. And it's part of one of the reasons why I think taking taking on gerrymandering, making a constitutional amendment to have people draw those lines instead of politicians felt really great because we actually can make progress on it and we can actually help pave the way for a lot more change to come. I think that 
when we're talking about these really big issues, it can be really overwhelming. It can feel like, oh my gosh, there's so much stacked against you. And even for us trying to amend our constitution here in Michigan, you needed millions of dollars. You needed to know how to write constitutional language. You needed to know uh, how to gather a bunch of signatures and then ultimately how to talk to a bunch of people before the election so they know what they were voting on. And hopefully they liked what uh, you had worked on and they vote yes. Uh, I think that there's a lot of similarities with sometimes trying to think about how do we really make an impact on the environment. Uh, but I think one of the biggest lessons that we learned in the campaign was that you have to start figure out a way to start making change. And especially going down to those root levels, what systemically is going to change things? For us, if we want free and fair elections in not only Michigan, but the United States, we have to go back to those basic building blocks of democracy, like how our lines are drawn to determine whose representatives are who, or things like the incentives for running for office, uh, the amount of money that's spent in elections, or how the election processes are run. Are there enough polling places? Is it safe to do so? Uh, who has access, who doesn't? All of those things, once we start being able to address those, they'll help accelerate more changes to come uh, because voters will have more power to actually make change within the system. Our whole campaign has been about the people, about representing accurately the voices of the people and making sure that what we actually want as change doesn't get manipulated from anybody. And I feel so confident that we have done that and will continue to do that. What I really love right now about Slay the Dragon coming out amidst this really crazy global pandemic um, is that although gerrymandering is huge and the problem is really real. There are millions of people who've had their votes impacted and their voices basically silenced. It also shows that we can actually make change happen, especially when we work together. In Michigan, we had thousands of people use whatever talents they had, whether uh, it was wood carving or that they could do bookkeeping or that they were really good at talking to people, being able to actually explain what redistricting is. And by working together and working with all those talents, we were able to actually make change. We were able to go up against uh, the billionaires who are trying to fight us and who brought lawsuits against us and who wrote, uh, did fake ads against us. Um, we were able to ha have a louder voice than them because the reality was there were many more of us who wanted a fair system instead of a rigged system. And I think that's the same with caring about the planet. There are so many people out there who are hungry to do something and who really do care. But it's really important that we find each other and that we unite to work together to make change. Not to just talk about it, not to just think about it a lot or even know a lot about it, but to actually start somewhere, no matter how small. Uh, so I hope that you get a chance to check out Slay the Dragon. And also there's a really great uh, website too where you can go and check out more details about how to take on gerrymandering in your state. Uh, the People, which is the organization that I started to help people across the country, thepeople.org is one of them. And you can also go to participant.com slash slay the dragon.